Hello, welcome to the Curiosity Show. In today's program, Rob will introduce you to visitors from outer space. Stay with us. That's a tektite, but where did it come from? There, I'm afraid, is something of a mystery. Although we think it's probably solved now, it has a lot to do with meteorites. And what's a meteorite? Well, you've doubtless seen a shooting star, so-called. When you're lying on your back, looking up at the sky on a dark night, and you see these great streaks of light that come through the sky. They're about five or ten a, a, an hour on the whole, but on a good night you might see even more. Well, they are meteorites, bits of stuff from outer space that hit our atmosphere so fast that they glow white hot and often burn or vaporise. And they are meteors, but occasionally some of them come down to Earth through the atmosphere, and if they land on the Earth, they become a meteorite. And they're known as stony or metallic, and this is a stony. You can see it's blasted its way through the atmosphere, burning up as it came, rather like the nose cone of re-entry capsules that we've seen from our space programs, hit the Earth and broke into a couple of fragments, but it's still quite recognisable as a chunk of stone that's come a very hot way. That's a stony meteorite because that's what it's made from. And you might reasonably guess that a metallic meteorite is made from metal. It is, and that's a sample. And thousands of years ago, a big one of these landed near Alice Springs. It was the Henbury meteorite, and today you can visit the site where it landed and walk around the rim. It's about 150 kilometres from Alice Springs, and you pass it on the way to Ayers Rock, and it's well worth a visit. And walking around the rim is rather like walking around the rim of a football field. It's about the same size as a good playing oval. The rim slopes away into the centre to form a gigantic bowl. It's like walking around the size of a huge dam. In fact, in the wet season, some of these craters do fill up with water and they're used as stock watering holes. The others let the water out, but they do trap enough to form something of a forest inside them. And if you get down amongst those trees, you can look up and see the size of the rim. The Henbury meteorite was about the size, they think, of a 44-gallon drum. But it came in at the speed of 5,000 times the speed of a rifle bullet. And of course, anything doing that is full of energy and it hits the earth and blows up and uh, creates an enormous hole. And you can see from the walls around this meteorite crater, they're made of pulverised rock. The forces involved are absolutely gigantic. And this, in fact, is a piece of the Henbury meteorite, the very meteorite that made those hollows in the ground. It's been cut across and polished, and you can see the remarkable patterns inside, which are crystals of iron and nickel. And both of those are attracted by a magnet, so if I put a magnet on, you can see that's the test. It sticks there. In fact, people collect fragments of this by going around near the meteorite crater with a magnet, and if you're lucky, you do that. You pick up bits of the very meteorite that uh, made the crater, the Henbury meteorite. Well, that's metallic. What about glassy meteorites? Well, that's what tektites were once thought to be. Bits of the moon's surface that have been struck off and hit the Earth. We now think that's not so. Since we landed on the moon, we've found that the surface isn't made of these things. And it's now believed these things came from the Earth, but were formed by a meteorite that struck and pulverised the Earth's surface into molten droplets of glass. I can give you something of an idea of how that could have worked with a marble. That's the meteorite. A bucket of water will serve as the Earth. Watch this. I drop the meteorite and it hits the surface like that. And it's really too fast to see. But if I slow that down, you can see something of the process of a meteorite forming a crater. And it goes like this. A meteorite comes in at a terrific speed and it strikes the surface of the Earth. It melts and it blows up in this ring. And that's the crater beginning to form. The walls are thrown up on the side and as they settle down, that will be the rim of the crater. Here they go, settling down now. But you notice there are lots of droplets up in the air. And those droplets of molten earth flew for sometimes thousands of kilometres and landed in little droplets of solidified glass in the desert or wherever they happened to fall. That's one, and that, we believe, is the origin of the tektite. 